Hit the subscribe button above and leave a comment below so we can bring you even more free thriller audiobooks. Chapter 1 Arrival Detective Michael Callahan stepped off the plane and into the humid embrace of New Orleans, the air thick and heavy like the memories that haunted him. He wiped the sweat from his brow, his eyes darting around the busy airport. It was a city with a heartbeat, one that could be felt through every back alley and neon lit street. A place where he hoped to find a fresh start and escape the shadows of his past. The taxi ride from the airport was an assault on his senses. The colorful streets were filled with the sounds of laughter and jazz, the smell of jambalaya and beignets. But beneath the city's vibrant exterior, Michael could feel the dark undercurrents that pulsed through its veins. As the taxi pulled up to the New Orleans Police Department headquarters, Michael took a deep breath and steeled himself for what lay ahead. He stepped out of the cab and into the bustling station, its walls echoing with the chaos of a city that never truly slept. Detective Callahan, I presume, a gravelly voice called out. Michael turned to see an older man with salt and pepper hair and a worn, world-weary face. He extended a hand, introducing himself as Detective Eddie LeBlanc. That's me, Michael replied, shaking his new partner's hand. Eddie studied him for a moment, his eyes narrowing as he took in Michael's clean-cut appearance and eager demeanor. You're a long way from Kansas, Dorothy he drawled, the corners of his mouth turning up in a smirk. Michael couldn't help but grin at the comment. Kansas was never really my scene, he admitted. I'm hoping New Orleans has a little more to offer. Eddie chuckled, leading Michael through the busy station. Oh, it's got plenty to offer, all right. But it ain't all gumbo and Mardi Gras, kid. You best be prepared for the darker side of the Big Easy. Michael glanced around at the sea of officers and criminals, his brow furrowing. I didn't come here expecting a vacation, Eddie. I came here to make a difference. Eddie sighed, stopping in front of his cluttered desk. Well, then you're in for a rude awakening, because the only difference you'll make in this city is how fast you learn to look the other way. He gestured to the piles of paperwork and unanswered messages. This city's got a way of chewing up idealists like you and spitting them out. Michael stared at his partner, refusing to back down. I'm not afraid of a little darkness, Eddie. I've seen my fair share. Eddie raised an eyebrow, a flicker of curiosity in his eyes. Is that right? Well, then you might just fit in better than I thought. Before Michael could respond, a harried-looking sergeant approached dropping a thick case file onto Eddie's desk. LeBlanc, Callahan, this one's yours. High-profile case, lots of pressure from the top. Don't screw it up. Eddie grumbled, flipping open the file and scanning its contents. Well, kid, looks like you're getting thrown into the deep end. Welcome to New Orleans. As Michael took a seat beside his new partner and began to sift through the evidence, he couldn't shake the feeling that he had just stepped into a world of corruption and danger far beyond anything he had ever experienced. But despite the unease that gnawed at his gut, a fire burned within him, fueled by his unyielding desire for justice. He knew that he couldn't afford to let his fears hold him back, not when there were lives on the line and a city that needed saving. The case file revealed the brutal murder of a prominent businessman a crime that had sent shockwaves through the city's elite. As Michael and Eddie delved deeper into the evidence, they found themselves in a labyrinth of secrets and lies, with motives and suspects appearing at every turn. The pressure from the higher-ups was mounting, but Michael couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the city's neon lights flickered to life, Michael and Eddie found themselves in a dimly lit bar on the edge of the French Quarter. Eddie took a long swig of his beer, his gaze fixed on the amber liquid. You know, he began, his voice low and thoughtful, I used to be like you, kid. Full of hope, thinking I could make a difference. But this city... He trailed off, his eyes darkening. It changes you. It forces you to see the ugly truth, that justice is just an illusion. Michael's jaw tightened, but he held Eddie's gaze. I refuse to believe that, he said firmly. There's always hope, Eddie. We just have to keep fighting for it. 
Eddie shook his head, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. You'll learn, kid. You'll learn. As they left the bar and walked through the sultry streets of New Orleans, Michael couldn't help but feel the weight of Eddie's words. But in his heart, he knew that he couldn't give up on his quest for justice, no matter how dark and twisted the path became. The city of New Orleans had swallowed countless souls before him, but Michael Callahan was determined to be the exception. As the sounds of jazz and laughter filled the air around him, Michael vowed to himself that he would not be consumed by the darkness of the Big Easy. He would face the corruption, the danger, and the heartache head-on, fighting for the justice that he believed in, even if it seemed like an impossible dream. And as the night wore on and the city's shadows deepened, Michael felt the stirrings of a new resolve within him. He knew that he was a stranger in a strange land, that he had much to learn and even more to lose. But if there was one thing he was sure of, it was that he would not be broken by the city that he now called home. For better or for worse, Michael Callahan was here to stay, and nothing would stand in his way. The journey had only just begun. Chapter 2 The Partner the morning sun cast long shadows over the streets of New Orleans, as Detective Michael Callahan and his new partner, Detective Eddie LeBlanc, cruised through the city in their unmarked police car. The air was thick with the smell of coffee and beignets, the city slowly coming to life. So tell me, Eddie, Michael began, his eyes scanning the passing buildings. Why'd you become a cop? Eddie shrugged, his gaze fixed on the road ahead. I dunno. Same reason as most, I guess. Wanted to make a difference, do some good in the world. He glanced over at Michael, a bitter smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. That was a long time ago, though. Michael studied his partner, trying to read the lines etched into his weathered face. What happened? Eddie sighed, his grip tightening on the steering wheel. This city happened, kid. I've seen good cops go bad, innocent people die and justice served only to those who can pay for it. After a while, it starts to wear you down. Michael frowned, his thoughts returning to his own reasons for coming to New Orleans. But you're still here, still fighting. That's got to count for something, right? Eddie shook his head, his eyes dark. I'm just counting the days until I can retire, go fishing in the Gulf, and forget about all the darkness I've seen. He glanced over at Michael a sudden intensity in his gaze. You should be careful, kid. This city has a way of breaking even the strongest of hearts. The rest of the ride passed in silence, both men lost in their thoughts. When they finally pulled up to the crime scene, the air was tense, the weight of their conversation still hanging heavily between them. As they approached the yellow police tape, Michael couldn't help but feel a pang of excitement. This was his chance to prove himself to show Eddie and the rest of the department that he was more than just another idealistic newcomer. The crime scene was a grisly one. A young man lay sprawled on the sidewalk, his lifeless eyes staring up at the sky, a gunshot wound to the chest. The victim's face was familiar. He was the son of a prominent businessman, a man with powerful connections and a dangerous reputation. Eddie crouched down beside the body, his expression grim. Looks like we've got ourselves a real mess here, kid. Michael nodded, his gaze fixed on the lifeless form before him. What do we know so far? Eddie straightened up, his voice low. Not much. No witnesses, no weapon. Just another senseless killing in the Big Easy. Michael frowned, his mind racing. There's always a reason, Eddie. We just have to find it. Eddie snorted, his face incredulous. You really think you can solve this case, kid? Bring the killer to justice? Michael met his partner's gaze, his voice steady. I'm going to try. Over the next few days, Michael and Eddie threw themselves into the investigation, their partnership growing stronger with each passing hour. They chased down leads, interviewed witnesses, and pieced together the fragments of a story that seemed to grow more tangled by the minute. But as the case unfolded, Michael began to notice the subtle signs of corruption that seemed to permeate the department. Officers took bribes, evidence went missing, and justice seemed to be a commodity that could be bought and sold. It was a stark contrast to the noble profession he had once believed in, and with each passing day, 
his faith in the system began to waver. Despite his growing disillusionment, Michael was determined to pursue justice for the victim. He confided his concerns to Eddie, who simply sighed and looked away, as if to say he'd seen it all before. One evening, as they sat in a dimly lit bar, Eddie finally spoke up. You know, kid, when I first joined the force, I was a lot like you. Full of fire, ready to take on the world. But this city, it has a way of changing you. Michael looked at his partner, his voice quiet but resolute. Maybe we can change it too. Eddie chuckled bitterly, swirling the amber liquid in his glass. You're a dreamer, Callahan. But maybe, just maybe, you've got the guts to make a difference. As their investigation continued, Michael found himself more and more at odds with the department, refusing to turn a blind eye to the corruption that festered around him. And as he pushed back against the system, he began to realize that Eddie's cynicism was not born of apathy, but of a profound desire to protect those around him from the crushing weight of the city's darkness. In the weeks that followed, Michael and Eddie slowly began to unravel the tangled web of deceit and corruption that lay at the heart of their case. They faced threats, setbacks, and betrayals, but through it all they forged a bond that transcended their differences. And as they stood side by side, facing down the darkness that threatened to consume them both, Michael realized that he had found something in the chaos of the Big Easy, a partner he could trust and a friendship that would guide him through the most difficult of times. Together, they vowed to keep fighting for justice and to take on the corruption that had seeped into the very fabric of their city. And while they knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger and heartache, they also knew that, for the first time in a long time, they had something worth fighting for. As the sun began to set over New Orleans, casting the city in a warm, golden light, Michael Callahan and Eddie LeBlanc stood together, ready to take on the challenges of the Big Easy and to seek justice in a world that seemed determined to tear them apart. Chapter 3 The Corruption The incessant patter of rain against the window filled the otherwise silent office as Michael sat at his desk, poring over the case files. The high-profile murder investigation had consumed him and Eddie for weeks, but the deeper they dug, the more the ugly truth of corruption within the department reared its head. Eddie burst into the room his face flushed and frustration evident in his every movement. He tossed a stack of papers onto Michael's desk, the sound echoing through the quiet space. What's this? Michael asked, eyeing the papers warily. Orders from the top, Eddie spat, his voice tight. They want us to pin the murder on Marissa. No questions asked. Michael's eyes widened as he scanned the documents. But this is insane. We don't have enough evidence to charge her. Eddie leaned against the desk, his arms crossed. Welcome to the Big Easy, kid. Evidence doesn't matter when the right people want a conviction. But Marissa is innocent, Michael insisted, his voice firm. We can't just railroad her to protect the department. Eddie sighed, his expression grim. I know it's not right, but we've got to pick our battles. If we cross the wrong people, We'll be out on our asses before we know it. Michael slammed his fist on the desk, his face a mask of anger and frustration. No, I didn't come here to be a part of this corrupt system. I came here to fight for justice, and I'm not going to let an innocent girl go down for a crime she didn't commit. Eddie studied Michael for a moment, then nodded slowly. All right, kid. If you're willing to risk it all, I'll stand by you. But we need solid evidence to clear Marissa's name, something that will make the powers that be back off. As the rain continued to fall, Michael and Eddie delved deeper into the case, navigating a treacherous web of lies, deceit, and blackmail. They found themselves in the darkest corners of the city, where the lines between right and wrong blurred beyond recognition. In a dingy bar on the outskirts of the French Quarter, they met with a contact who claimed to have information about the real killer. The man's face was shrouded in shadow, but his voice was steady as he revealed what he knew. The guy you're looking for is Tommy Delacroix. He's got ties to some of the city's most powerful figures, and I've heard whispers that he was the one who pulled the trigger. Michael's eyes narrowed, his mind racing. Why would he kill Marissa's boyfriend? 
The informant shrugged. Word is, the victim had dirt on some very influential people. They wanted him silenced, and Delacroix was the man for the job. With this new lead, Michael and Eddie set to work, determined to build a case against Delacroix and exonerate Marissa. But as they closed in on the truth, they found themselves in the crosshairs of those who would stop at nothing to protect their secrets. One night, as they left the station, a black sedan pulled up alongside them, its windows tinted and its engine purring menacingly. A man emerged, his face obscured by the darkness, and delivered a chilling message. You two need to drop this case if you know what's good for you, he warned, his voice cold and emotionless. If you don't, there will be consequences. As the car sped away, Michael and Eddie exchanged a tense glance. They knew they were in dangerous territory, but they refused to back down. Days later, they finally had enough evidence to confront Delacroix and expose the corruption that had taken root in the department. They presented their findings to their captain a man they hoped would stand by them in the pursuit of justice. But as they laid out the evidence, they saw the captain's face harden with anger and disappointment. You fools, he growled, his voice low and dangerous. You have no idea what you've done. You've poked the bear, and now we're all going to pay the price. Michael's heart sank, but he refused to be deterred. Captain, we can't let this go. We have to bring Delacroix to justice, and expose the corruption within the department. It's the only way things will ever change. The captain stared at them for a moment, his eyes full of sadness and resignation. Finally, he sighed, his shoulders slumping. Very well. But remember, you brought this storm upon us. You'd better be prepared to weather it. With the captain's reluctant support, Michael and Eddie moved forward, arresting Delacroix and presenting their evidence to the district attorney. The news sent shockwaves through the city, and as the scope of the corruption became public knowledge, it was clear that the department would never be the same. But the fight was far from over. The powerful figures behind the corruption didn't take kindly to being exposed, and Michael and Eddie found themselves facing threats, intimidation, and even attempts on their lives. Still, they refused to back down determined to fight for justice and protect the innocent, even if it meant risking everything they held dear. As the rain continued to fall on the streets of New Orleans, Michael and Eddie stood together, united against the darkness that threatened to consume the city. They knew the road ahead would be difficult and fraught with danger, but they also knew that they couldn't turn their backs on the truth. In the end, that was all that mattered, the pursuit of justice no matter the cost. Chapter 4 The Girl The sun had long since set, leaving the streets of New Orleans bathed in the neon glow of countless signs and lampposts. Michael and Eddie sat in their unmarked car, parked across the street from Marissa's small, run-down apartment. They had been keeping an eye on her since the case landed on their desk, and as the days went by, Michael became more and more convinced of her innocence. She doesn't look like a killer, he muttered, watching as Marissa pulled the curtains shut her silhouette framed against the dim light within. Eddie snorted. Looks can be deceiving, kid. We've seen that plenty of times. Michael sighed, rubbing his eyes. I know, but something doesn't add up. We need to talk to her, find out what she's hiding. The next day, they approached Marissa at a small cafe in the French Quarter. She sat alone, sipping a café au lait and picking at a beignet, her eyes red-rimmed from lack of sleep. As they sat down across from her, she looked up, startled. What do you want? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. We wanted to help you, Michael said softly. We believe you're innocent, but we need to know what you're hiding. It might be the key to proving you didn't kill your boyfriend. Marissa hesitated, her fingers gripping the edge of the table. Finally, she took a deep breath and began to speak. There's something you should know. I saw the killer. Michael's eyes widened, and Eddie leaned forward, his attention focused entirely on the young girl. Why didn't you tell anyone? Michael asked, his voice tense. Marissa looked down, her voice trembling. Because I was scared. The man who killed my boyfriend, he saw me too. He threatened to come after me if I told anyone what I'd seen. 
Michael exchanged a worried glance with Eddie, before turning back to Marissa. Can you describe him? Anything you remember could be crucial. Marissa nodded, tears welling in her eyes. He was tall and muscular with a scar on his left cheek. And he had a tattoo, a snake wrapped around his forearm. As Marissa continued to describe the man, Michael's heart raced. The pieces were starting to come together, and the truth seemed almost within reach. But he knew that they were treading on dangerous ground, and with each new revelation the stakes grew higher. Over the following days, they worked tirelessly to find the man Marissa had described. They scoured the city, questioning informants and combing through records determined to uncover his identity. And as they dug deeper, it became clear that Marissa's life hung in the balance. If they didn't find the killer soon, she might become his next victim. It was late one night when Michael finally stumbled upon a lead. A known criminal named Victor Malone matched Marissa's description of the killer, right down to the snake tattoo. Michael's pulse quickened as he called Eddie, sharing the news with his partner. We've got him, Michael said, his voice filled with a mix of excitement and dread. But we need to move fast. I have a feeling he knows we're on to him. As they raced through the city, the neon lights blurring into streaks of color, Michael couldn't shake the feeling that time was running out. They needed to find Malone and bring him to justice before he had the chance to silence Marissa for good. When they arrived at Malone's last known address, a rundown building in a seedy part of town, they found the door unlocked and a trail of destruction inside. Furniture lay broken and overturned, and it was clear that a struggle had taken place. Michael's heart sank as he realized they were too late. Malone's not here, Eddie said grimly, his voice heavy with disappointment. He's on the run, and he's taken Marissa with him. They searched the apartment, desperate for any clue that might lead them to their quarry. In a corner of the room, they discovered a discarded cell phone, its screen cracked but still functional. Hoping it belonged to Malone, Michael powered it on and began to search through its contents. In the call log, they found a recent call to a number they didn't recognize. Taking a chance, Michael dialed the number, praying that it would provide them with a much-needed break. The line connected, and a gravelly voice answered. Who is this? Michael hesitated before responding. My name is Detective Michael Callahan. I'm looking for Victor Malone. I believe he has taken a young girl named Marissa. There was a pause on the other end, and then the voice replied, I know where they are, but it'll cost you. As Michael negotiated with the informant, he couldn't help but feel uneasy. They were entering dangerous territory, relying on the word of a criminal to save Marissa. But with no other options, they had to take the risk. Following the informant's directions, they sped through the darkened streets of New Orleans, each mile bringing them closer to the confrontation they knew was coming. As they approached their destination, an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city, the tension in the car was palpable. We don't know what we're walking into, Eddie warned, his eyes scanning the shadows around them. Stay sharp, kid. As they entered the warehouse, they could hear the faint sounds of a struggle. With their weapons drawn, they crept through the darkness, following the noises until they reached a small, dimly lit room. Inside, they found Malone and Marissa, locked in a desperate struggle. Without hesitation, they sprang into action. Eddie tackled Malone, wrestling him to the ground while Michael pulled Marissa to safety. The fight was brutal and chaotic, but finally Malone was subdued, his hands secured in cuffs. As they led Malone out of the warehouse, Marissa clung to Michael, her body shaking from the ordeal. He could see the gratitude in her eyes, and he knew they had done the right thing. They had risked their lives and their careers to save an innocent girl, and in doing so, they had exposed the corruption that had festered within their department. It was a small victory in the grand scheme of things, but to Michael, it was proof that justice was still possible, even in the darkest corners of the Big Easy. Chapter 5 The Investigation With Victor Malone behind bars, Michael and Eddie knew their work was far from over. The investigation had only scratched the surface of a much larger conspiracy, 
and they had to dig deeper to expose the truth. They needed to trace the web of secrets that seemed to stretch from the mansions of the Garden District to the back alleys of the French Quarter. Their first stop was the Garden District, where Marissa's wealthy boyfriend, Damien, had lived. As they approached the Grand Mansion, Michael couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The opulent house seemed to hide dark secrets behind its carefully manicured facade. Knocking on the door, they were greeted by a stoic butler, who reluctantly allowed them inside. The interior was just as lavish as the exterior, filled with priceless antiques and artwork. Michael and Eddie exchanged glances as they were led to a study, where they hoped to find clues about Damien's life. As they sifted through documents and personal items, Eddie stumbled upon a hidden compartment in Damien's desk. Inside, they found a series of letters and photographs, all connected to powerful figures in the city. Michael's hands shook as he leafed through the stack. These are politicians, judges, businessmen, all of them linked to Damien somehow. Eddie nodded gravely. Seems like our boy was playing a dangerous game. No wonder someone wanted him dead. They spent hours poring over the evidence, trying to piece together the puzzle. It was clear that Damien had been involved in a web of corruption, using his wealth and connections to manipulate the city's most powerful players. But as they tried to untangle the threads, they realized that they were drawing the attention of some very dangerous people. Michael's phone buzzed, and he answered it with trepidation. The voice on the other end was unfamiliar, but menacing. We know what you're doing, the voice warned. Back off, or there will be consequences. Michael clenched his jaw, his anger rising. We're not backing down. We're going to expose the truth, no matter the cost. The line went dead, leaving Michael with a chilling sense of foreboding. He knew that they were stepping into a minefield but there was no turning back. Undeterred, they continued their investigation, following leads that took them deeper into the heart of the city. They found themselves in the shadows of the French Quarter, where the neon lights seemed to cast more darkness than illumination. In a dimly lit bar, they met with a nervous informant, who provided them with crucial information about the criminal underworld's connection to the city's elite. As the informant spoke, Michael and Eddie realized just how deep the corruption ran, and how perilous their mission had become. It's like a hydra, the informant whispered, his eyes darting nervously around the room. Cut off one head, and two more grow back in its place. You're messing with forces you can't comprehend. Eddie frowned, his brow furrowing. We've dealt with dangerous people before, and we're not stopping now. But as they left the bar, Michael couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. He could sense the eyes of unseen enemies upon them, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. As the days turned into weeks, the investigation took a toll on both detectives. They were constantly looking over their shoulders, fearing that every shadow held a potential threat. But they refused to back down, their determination fueled by the knowledge that they were fighting for justice. It wasn't until they received an anonymous tip that they finally found the breakthrough they needed. The tip led them to a clandestine meeting between several high-ranking officials and key players from the criminal underworld. Armed with hidden cameras and recording devices, Michael and Eddie infiltrated the meeting, capturing damning evidence of the corruption that permeated every level of New Orleans society. As the conspirators plotted their next move, unaware of the detective's presence, Michael and Eddie realized that they had struck gold. With this evidence, they could bring down the entire network of corruption and finally deliver justice to the city they had sworn to protect. The night was tense as they carefully extracted themselves from the meeting, the weight of their discovery pressing down on them. They knew that once they handed this evidence over, there would be no turning back. Powerful people would fall, and the city would be forever changed. Back at the precinct, they hesitated for a moment before submitting their findings. With a heavy heart, Michael handed over the recordings and photographs, knowing that this was only the beginning of a much larger battle. We've done it, Eddie, Michael whispered, his voice filled with equal parts relief and apprehension. We found the evidence we needed to expose the corruption. Eddie gave a tired nod, 
a grim smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Yeah, kid, we did. But remember, the fight's not over yet. There are still more battles to be fought, and more monsters to face in this city. As the wheels of justice slowly began to turn, Michael and Eddie knew that their work was far from over. The investigation had opened their eyes to the darkness that lay beneath the surface of New Orleans, and they vowed to continue their fight for justice, no matter the cost. With the evidence in the hands of the authorities, they braced themselves for the storm that was sure to follow. But despite the risks and the challenges that lay ahead, they were determined to see their mission through to the end. For they knew that in the battle against corruption, there could be no compromise, no surrender. And as they stood together, facing the uncertain future, Michael Callahan and Eddie LeBlanc knew that they had found something more than just a partner in their quest for justice. They had found a brother in arms, bound together by their unwavering commitment to the truth and their shared belief that even in the darkest corners of the Big Easy, justice could prevail. Chapter 6 The Truth The courtroom was packed, the tension palpable as the trial of Marissa reached its climax. As the defense presented the damning evidence that Michael and Eddie had uncovered, the jury watched in stunned silence, the weight of the truth sinking in. Marissa, once vilified by the media and public, was now seen as a victim of a corrupt system. As the judge declared her not guilty, relief flooded through her, tears streaming down her face. Michael and Eddie exchanged a weary smile, knowing they had done their part to bring her justice. However, the real killer remained at large. In the aftermath of the trial, Michael and Eddie felt the burden of unfinished business heavy on their shoulders. They knew they couldn't rest until they hunted down the true murderer. As they walked the neon-lit streets of the city, their resolve was tested by the lurking shadows of the underworld. The line between right and wrong had become blurred, and they couldn't help but question if justice in the Big Easy was even possible. It was during a late-night stakeout that their perseverance paid off. An anonymous informant, fearful for their life, revealed the identity of the real killer. The name sent a chill down Michael's spine, Victor Malone, a notorious crime lord with ties to the corruption they had recently exposed. Tracking down Victor wouldn't be easy. He had gone into hiding, no doubt aware that his carefully constructed web of deceit was beginning to unravel. But Michael and Eddie were relentless, their determination fueled by their pursuit of justice. Finally, after weeks of tireless investigation, they cornered Victor in an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. As they approached guns drawn, Victor smirked, his eyes devoid of remorse. You'll never take me alive, he taunted, raising his own weapon. But before he could pull the trigger, a shot rang out, echoing through the night. Eddie had fired first, hitting Victor in the shoulder and sending him sprawling to the ground. As they handcuffed the wounded man, Michael stared at his partner in disbelief. Nice shot, he breathed, relief and gratitude mingling in his voice. Eddie shrugged, his eyes hard. We couldn't let him get away. Not after everything we've been through. Victor's arrest sent shockwaves through the city. The police department, already reeling from the exposure of corruption, was now faced with the task of rebuilding its reputation from the ground up. Michael and Eddie were hailed as heroes, their tireless pursuit of justice a testament to their dedication. As they stood on a darkened street corner, staring out at the city they had come to call home, they knew their work was far from over. The Big Easy still held many secrets and the fight for justice would continue. But as they prepared to face the next challenge, a new mystery arose, one that threatened to shake the very foundations of their partnership. A series of unexplained deaths plagued the city, and the victims shared a single, chilling connection. They were all individuals who had played a role in the corruption that Michael and Eddie had worked so hard to expose. As the body count rose, it became apparent that they were dealing with a new threat a ruthless killer who seemed to be metting out their own brand of justice. With each new crime scene, the detectives found themselves drawn into a tangled web of deceit and vengeance, one that threatened to consume them both. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the city in shadows, 
Michael couldn't help but wonder if they had truly made a difference in the fight against corruption. The battle for justice had taken its toll on both men, and the future seemed uncertain. But as he turned to Eddie, he saw the same fire that had ignited T-Air partnership still burning in his partner's eyes. Together, they had faced insurmountable odds and emerged victorious. The bond they shared was unbreakable, forged in the crucible of their shared struggles. Eddie caught Michael's gaze and nodded, a silent understanding passing between them. They had faced darkness before and they would face it again, side by side. As long as they stood together, there was no challenge they couldn't overcome. Let's bring this new killer to justice, Michael said, his voice steady and determined. Eddie grinned, his own determination shining through. You got it, partner. Bio-justice never sleeps. Together, they walked into the night, ready to confront the new threat head-on. They knew the road ahead would be fraught with danger, but they were resolute in their mission to bring justice to the Big Easy. And as the city's neon lights flickered in the darkness, casting long shadows on the streets, Michael and Eddie's pursuit of the truth continued, a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in darkness.